how I pulled off the dopest marketing event of my career to date. I'm biased, but we just threw one hell of a once in a lifetime experience for our members. In this video, I'm gonna share my framework, how we came up with the idea, how we executed the idea, how we're gonna get leverage of the media afterwards. And if you stay to the very end, you're gonna get let in on a little secret of how I said I'm never gonna do something like this again. So steal this framework, make something dope. Okay, so what was the idea? Well, we had an arm farm event where we had a live taiko drummer in the gym playing a live set while everybody else was engulfed in fog and lasers, training arm farm synchronized to the music. It was completely outrageous. We have a live taiko drummer right here playing a live set at Allegiant, arms only, ripping our sleeves off. We got high level training here and we're doing it right now. How did we come up with the idea? Well, honestly, I was training, right? I was just working out by myself and I was probably listening to Wardruna or some sort of strange Viking Nordic war music and I'm listening to these drums and stuff and then boom, an idea just pops in my head like, what if we actually had like a live war drummer playing a set to arm farm so that was the that was the genesis of the idea right neil gaiman the author of sandman the comics one of my favorites the graphic novels he talks about um when he would go on q and a's for book tours and stuff and little kids would raise their hand hey where do you get your ideas and um everybody's heard that question right and and usually like authors will kind of laugh or blah 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 but gaiman's like look that's a really good question and he answers it saying it's a confluence of things. So your past experiences, what you're reading, what you're interested in, what you're watching, what you're listening to, what workouts you're doing, all that stuff sort of comes together as a confluence and it becomes the source of inspiration. And that's how we came up with this idea. Then we had to figure out the goal and the strategy of this event. What's the successful outcome that we wanted to have? And for me, we had a couple. One, I wanted to throw a once in a lifetime event that became like the ultimate word of mouth generator where you just had to pull somebody over and like, you ha listen to me, I have to tell you what I just did at my gym. The next was I wanted to have a line around the block just like it was sort of like a merch drop or one of those concert venues that you're waiting to get into a small club show and you can just see a bunch of people lined around the block. And then I wanted to be able to leverage this event through media after we actually put the thing on. So. In person, it would only be you know 20-ish people that are getting to experience this, but can we make content? Can we tell the story to be able to maximize and leverage that after the event actually happens so we can continue to get ROI down the road? The next step was pitching my business partners on this idea. So in hindsight, this idea, this Arm Farm reunion tour, it looks like a really dope idea that obviously everybody would get behind, but in the very beginning when I'm walking in to pitch my business partners campaigning for resources and why we should do this, it's not the easiest thing because we run like a high performance strength and conditioning science backed performance center. And here I am kind of coming with this idea that's much more of like a concert once in a lifetime kind of Burning Man-esque experience. And you know what, but it was like, it was a good enough idea and you gotta just trust your dopeness. When you've got something that you think is like, dude, I think this could hit, I think this could be unique, I think this could be dope. It's your job to present that idea in a way that's gonna get other people excited about it. Like the idea alone might need a lot more context to get those other smart people involved. So I was in that meeting, I was like, yeah, hear me out, this is gonna be a super crazy idea, but, and by the end of it, they were like, you know, that's dope, let's do it. So some of my fears were kind of ill-founded on that, but I've been in other meetings too when you kind of come in and you're pretty excited about it and you don't necessarily get that get that sort of response back from your decision makers. So you gotta go in there, you gotta sell your ass off if you really believe in this idea. Next, we had to find the talent. How do you find Tycho drummer Pat Cruz if you don't know that he exists? Well, I hop on Google and I type, I think Tibetan war drum Los Angeles, and that didn't really get me anywhere. Then I typed war drum Los Angeles, and the first thing that pop up is sort of like a civil war era, like do 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 in um, their like uniforms and stuff. And I'm thinking to myself, well, you know, that could be cool. Like maybe we could make that work, but it wasn't quite the idea that I had wanted. And then um, I think I typed Japanese war drum 
and that brought the word Tyco up. I did a little bit of research on Tyco, then I typed Tyco Drumming Los Angeles, which kicks me into a YouTube, which I'm watching this long form YouTube on Tyco Drumming in Los Angeles. Turns out the shop is up in, the school is up in Pasadena. That leads me to going on their website, finding a bunch of different musicians, and then I'm searching them on Instagram, I'm DMing, I'm DMing, I'm following up. I finally send an email to the director over there. I follow up like four times. Finally, he just says, dude, we're freaking busy. Stop calling me and emailing me all the time. And I was just like, dude, I'm so sorry. Do you have anybody that can help me with this? He puts me in touch with who would become our musician, who responds right back to my DM on Instagram. And then bam, we have a phone call that night. And I do the same thing. I pitch him on the event as well. I said, Pat, this is going to sound super crazy. I know we've never met before, but here's the idea. And by the end of it, he was like, this sounds freaking awesome. I already got a bunch of inspiration in my head of how to pull this off. Like, I'm in. Next is choosing your team. So we had Tim that was going to write the program and coach the class. I knew that was going to be on lock. It was going to be a super special thing for the members coming back with having Tim run the actual session. Perfect guy for the job. Next, we had to find the content team. In this one, I went with Joe Oso, who did our founding Allegiant video and naming Allegiant. He's super creative and really pro and organized when it comes to actually delivering what you need. And then we had Mariana to help me in-house with the actual day of event logistics from helping with the line down the block to painting people's faces for the arm farm event and just helping with the overall logistics, extra manpower day of. Once you've got your team, just set the expectations, pitch your idea, explain what you're shooting for, have them pitch in their ideas so everybody collectively is rowing in the same direction. And it's super important that you just get everybody aligned on the same expectations, vibe, tone, color, everything that you're going for, for the mood of this event to be successful. Once you have your team in place, everybody's on the same page, then we're talking event logistics. What's the merchandise? Do you have enough time to be able to get that shipped in time for the event? Who's going to do the merchandise? Who's going to design the merchandise? What time is the event going to happen? Is that going to be at sunset? Is it important that it's dark? How are you going to manage RSVPs? What's the budget for this thing? This is when you're going through all those actual things to put the rubber to the road to actually make sure that you've got those pieces of the event logistics figured out ahead of time so you can pull this thing off nice and smooth. Then game day comes around. This is where you go out and let it fly. You play with swag. You put all this preparation and time and effort and organization so you can just go out and execute and have fun and be present in the moment rather than neurotic and like checking everything off, right? So it's just important that you got checklist day of that you can just go through and knock those out. You gotta do a couple reconfirmations with some people, but if you've picked the right team and you've got everything set up enough in advance, you should now just be able to go and play your game when it comes to game day. Then it's the content. Use your media as leverage. Get more mileage out of the event so everybody can see it, not just the people that were in there. You can think about your release timing. So I was planning on releasing this right around Coachella was happening because I kind of felt like it fit that sort of same vibe and energy, but I whiffed on the actual execution of it. I didn't get it live fast enough, but the intent was there. So who knows if that would have been a good idea or not, but giving myself some grace because overall everything did come out exactly how we wanted it. But when it comes to the content, this could be a whole other segment. Think of this idea of 11 times one. You could do 11 different snapshots of like the first five seconds, and then you have the rest of the video is the exact same. So you've got 11 different sort of headlines, if you will, that lead into the same body. And you can test all that stuff out there to see if one headline or one intro ends up working better than a, than the original one, but you're just repurposing the same content. And now you're putting on your, your, your marketing sort of advertising scientific experimenting hat, and you're probably going to get more views, more mileage out of it that way. And then this video now, like I'm talking in front of the camera, I'm getting better at public speaking. I'm sharing this cool idea. I'm trying to see, do I even know what the hell I'm talking about? And can I condense this down in a short enough way where somebody else can say like, oh wow, that does really make sense. And I can see sequentially how that actually happened because it's not just natural to sort of think like that, right? And put this stuff down. So you take all this stuff collectively together from the idea to the planning, to the execution, to the post-execution leverage. And then now you've got this whole system of this event and marketing material and content that now you can use to build your business. Now, if you stayed here till the end, the kicker on this thing that I promised in the beginning was 
We did something year one called metal at Allegiant South Bay where we had a live metal band that was going to come in to an arm farm workout and it was going to be a, a kind of similar thing, thrash metal, long hair, just playing and ripping. And um, the day of the event, the band canceled on me. They, they Everything was all good and then they canceled on me. They stopped in, answering my phone calls and I had probably six, three to six hours to find a new band. We ended up pulling off the event and I called, um, I used to bartend in the area and I called all the bartenders and stuff and to say, hey, do you have a band? Do you have a band? Do you have this? Do you have that? Should we do a DJ? Anyways, one of the dive bars kicked me onto the band that they use on Friday nights. I called them up. I'm like, hey, fellas, can you come do this thing? I know this sounds super crazy. They came and they saved the day. The members didn't even know that there was anything different and we pulled off that event. But I remember after that event happened, I said, I will never do a live music event again in something like this. And so never say never. Um, we ended up pulling it off successfully, but I learned a lot in that first round to make this one a whole lot smoother and a whole lot better. So hopefully that video helps. Go make something dope.